Hey guys, well, it's been a minute since we chatted and I wanted to show you my latest craft project. Um, I actually made this for my crafting club and the theme for this round of projects was Kentucky Derby. And so there were a lot of fascinators and roses and what else did we have? Jockeys. <laughs> Lots of jockeys, you know, a lot of the of obvious stuff. So I wanted to make something that everybody could use if maybe they were having a Kentucky Derby party, or maybe that would be a little inspiring for them to use even when it wasn't Kentucky Derby. So here it is. Ta-da! And this says, today's agenda, run for the roses. And so I like this because for me, it kind of feels like you're working, working, working all the time and you have big days in your life and it's like, okay, today's the day, we're gonna run for the roses. So that's why I made this and I figured that I would leave this out kind of all year. But as you can see, it was kind of inspired by the jockeys jerseys that they wear with the different patterns on there. And then of course, the red roses for the Kentucky Derby winner itself. So anyway, let's step in and I'll show you how to make this. It was pretty simple, but there are definitely some tricks that will make this easier for you if you wanted to make this yourself. What I liked about it the most is I tried two new things that I had never done before. One of them is the, have you seen all the videos about how people will burn the tissue when you're decoupaging to make the edges straight? So I've got some tips on that. And the other thing was I used some white wax in a jar that I had never used before. So I have a couple of things to say about that. So anyway, let's get started. To start the project, I laid out the design elements that I needed onto my silhouette and made sure I had them sized appropriately for the pre-made kind of wooden frame that I had picked up from Hobby Lobby. Basically, I set the square to be the same size as the wooden frame and then just made sure the design elements were in there. And I knew I was cutting them apart anyway, so I just put them all on one page and then ran it out a couple of times just so I could save vinyl. You can click on here and you can see the sizes that I used in case you try and redo it again. And you can also see what fonts I used as well. So you can create your own just by zooming in on this. And I printed it or I cut it out on high gloss vinyl because that's what I had, but you could use matte and it would look just as nice. As I said, then I sent it to my silhouette and cut it out and we were playing nice that day. <laughs> so Next thing I did was I actually covered the edges of the frames because I was going to spray it with this adhesive. I find that it's easier for the vinyl to stick, especially if it's a surface that is not smooth like wood or canvas. It's much easier for the vinyl to stick to it if you have already sprayed it with adhesive. So it's also good to let it sit for a bit so it's not super tacky when you try to put the vinyl down on it. So of course, then I went and did the weeding and transferred it onto my transfer tape. When I'm putting it down here, this board is, is super tacky. As you can see, the transfer tape is kind of wanting to stick to it, but that's the only way to really get the vinyl to stay stuck to the highly textured wood that I was using. So it turns out well, I like to use just a little, uh, one of those frozen yogurt spoons to kind of smooth my vinyl down. Works really good for burnishing for me. And I just went through and put each of the design elements onto the wood so I could space it out and I left that middle part for my letters. Okay, speaking of the letters, these are pre-purchased wood letters from Hobby Lobby. I liked the sort of old fashioned -y serif design. It was kind of like a stretched out Times New Roman. Now I did go ahead and paint these. You wouldn't have to do this, but some of the letters I was covering in napkins and I was afraid with the black and white napkin that maybe the off white color of the wood would come through and it would not look as bright as I wanted it to. So I just went ahead and made sure that all of them were the same sort of background as before. And I forgot to video the actual Mod Podge of the napkins and the scrap of paper to the letters. But basically you just use the Mod Podge like glue 
and you spread it all over the front of the letter because that's where you want the color of the, the paper or the napkin. And then I let it dry. Once it was dry, I went through and I tried to trim as much of the edges off as possible, being careful on the inside of the S's because it's really hard to get tight in there. So I didn't want to rip it off of the letter. And next, this is a technique I'd been wanting to do where you light it on fire so the edges of the paper burn up to the wood letter. And this seemed to work really well. A few of them burned all the way a little bit further than I wanted, and that might be because the Mod Podge wasn't all the way to the edge, perhaps. I'm not really sure. But I didn't mind the sort of torched look on the edge. I, I probably would have preferred it to be more consistent, so either torch all the edges or, yeah, I probably would have gone back and, and tried to torch all the edges so they all looked kind of burned like that. What it does leave though is some ash on the inside. So I just took a Q-tip on those curved edges on the inside and just did a little swipe to kind of get some of that off and being careful not to smudge the actual letters with the ash that was on the edges. I trimmed up a few of them as I could, but overall I really liked the technique. I did go back with some sandpaper and try to just smooth out those edges a little bit in a few areas where it didn't burn quite to the edge or maybe the Mod Podge was a little too thick and so it wasn't quite just it wasn't quite as crisp as I wanted it to so this is just super fine sandpaper from I think Home Depot I think you can see on there's 220 grit and just going around each of the letters now I will say I did the letters differently the ones you're seeing here are with scrapbook paper most people who do this technique, they use napkins and that's a much thinner paper. And so I think it does probably work a little bit better with this burning technique. I did do that as well with these, but with the napkins, I actually mod podged on top after I had glued the napkin to the letter. So I did the finishing before I lit it on fire and before I used the sandpaper. I don't think I would do it that way again. See so here it is finished and you can see um, the edges are still a little bit rough and there was a little bit more to sand down because there was more Mod Podge on it. So I think I would do it the way I did it with the scrapbook paper and wait to put the final coat of Mod Podge on until after I had done the burning and the sandpaper as you can see right here. So just working around it really to get in all those little nooks and crannies because I knew once I put it onto the wood if it was not kind of a crisp line it was going to look a little messy and I didn't I really didn't want that I wanted it to be as sharp lines as possible especially with these designs that were you know each one had a different color of paper on it to kind of replicate the jockey silks that they wear and so I don't know, I felt like it was important to try and get the edges as smooth as possible. So once I was happy with that, I went back and decided that the napkin ones had sort of a gloss finish because I had finished that with Mod Podge. So these absolutely needed it too. So I just quickly put some Mod Podge on that. I found it a little harder to not gunk up the inside edges. So I probably should have gone back with the sandpaper after these were done, but I don't think I did. Anyway, so just go through all those and um, Make sure you've got, you know, the same finish on all of them. I wanted that, whatever Mod Podge I was using, semi-gloss or whatever. So then once those were all dry, I laid them out in that extra space on my wood frame to see where I wanted the spacing. I didn't glue them down yet. I just really wanted to see where the spacing was going to be. And then I grabbed these artificial roses. These are just little miniature artificial roses that I found at Hobby Lobby again. And I pulled all the floral parts off of the stem and you have to do one more step from here because they've got kind of a a larger yeah sometimes if you pull the whole stem off they'll come apart completely so you need to be careful that you don't get overzealous with that but then with those roses you have to kind of clip the pointy part off don't go too close or else it'll come apart like that first one that you saw but clip them clip the little nubby part off so it'll sit more flat on top of your wood. 
So this just takes a second. There's, there's no wire in it, so it's really easy to cut. Okay, so then I got my board back out, made sure I liked the spacing. And the roses, it would, it was probably between eight and nine or 10 that I needed for each letter O. And it kind of depended on how squished those roses had gotten. And some of them were really full and some of them were kind of pinched a little bit. And so that would kind of determine how many I needed. So I just laid it out to see what I thought was gonna be appropriate. And then I started to glue down all the letters and then I went back and did the roses. So this is just, you know, regular hot glue gun. This is actually a cordless hot glue gun from Sherbon that I think is amazing. I really, really like it. Anyway, so like I said, glue all those down. Then you're gonna go back to your roses and do these one at a time. And I would do them side by side if that makes sense like i wouldn't do the top one and then the bottom one and then the you know then the one o'clock then the seven o'clock then the three o'clock thing because then you might not get the spacing the way you wanted it so i would do i would put them next to each other because you can always add more this particular one that came apart i wanted to use it anyway so i because i wasn't sure if i had enough roses for the whole project so i was like nope, i'm using this one so i had to uh go ahead and kind of put that rose back together, but it was no big deal. As you're going, try and pull some of the glue strings if you've got some of those left over, because remember the back of your wood is still tacky. And so those glue strings are gonna stick to it. It might not be as easy to pull up afterwards. So as soon as I saw a glue string, I tried to go ahead and just remove that real quick from the board. So like I said, just go all the way around till you've got all of your roses glued down. And I think on this one, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine-ish. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, so each one is just a little bit different depending on the roses and how they come out. So then after that, I went ahead and I removed all of the painter's tape that I had around the edges. And I felt like the, the frame sort of disappeared into the background. And so I decided to try this white wax that I had from uh, Waverly. It's a Waverly white wax. And this is just an old sock of my daughter's or mine. I don't even know. And so I dipped it in the white wax and I rubbed it onto the edges. Now, initially I rubbed it right off because that's how you're supposed to use the white wax. But then you could barely see that it was even on there. Uh, so I decided that I would leave the white wax on there and let it dry in its full color. So it's real important to keep the your swipe marks, the strokes that you're putting the white wax on, you wanna make sure that that looks okay to you because that's, that is absolutely how it's going to look when it's dry, if you're going to do the technique like this. If you wanna just wipe it off afterwards, then you don't have to worry about your kind of stroke marks very much. I left it on there because I thought it just added the tiniest bit of pop to make the white letters stand out. I just felt like it was a nice accent, but you absolutely could do it either way. You could also maybe, I think it would be cute with a black frame since I used the black and white napkin for the E. And that is it, I hope you like it. Hey, thanks so much for joining me today. If you like the content in this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified the next time we have a crafting video or other fun video out, which is about once a week. So thanks so much for coming and I'll see you soon.